I'm delighted now to be speaking to uh, Mark English, who uh, who joins us. He's taking time out from his uh, full time training camp ahead of the Europeans to to look ahead to that event and speak all things athletics. Good to see you, Mark. Good to talk to you. Good to see you, Ashin. Thanks for having me. Uh, listen, delighted to have you on. Before we look ahead to to the Europeans next week, maybe we'll recap over the last couple of weeks. Uh, a ninth national championship uh, at the indoors recently. Uh, you looked very comfortable in it, Mark. Does winning a national title for a ninth time still mean as much to you as what it was for the for the first couple of occasions? Thanks very much. Uh, it certainly wasn't. It was certainly a tough race anyway because Roland Surlis is a great competitor. But it uh, it was definitely an achievement that I um, value a lot to win my ninth national title is um, is uh, always something that uh, I've wanted to do. Um, and yeah, as I say, like I'll continue to to race my national championships and uh, to win as many as I can. Yeah, and you carried that form obviously into to Spain earlier this week, where you looked very comfortable in that race in, in Madrid, Mark. Yeah, again, it was a very competitive race. You had Pablo Sanchez and uh, Valadares from Spain there. You had Kyle Langford who finished fourth at the World Champs in two thousand seventeen. So good quality uh, field. And I was very happy to come away with the win, especially with the upcoming European Championships. So um, it's all positive. Yeah. Are you comfortable? I know I use the word comfortable several occasions already, but are you comfortable with life at the minute and, and where you're at, be it on the track and off it? Yeah, like I'm just trying to get the most out of myself. Um, so <clears throat> training is going well. And we'll see next week uh, how I get on to the European Championships. Yeah. You're now a full-time athlete. How has that differed, Mark, from where it was a number of years ago where you were trying to juggle the books, you were trying to become the doctor and you were trying to be the best athlete and put in the best performances you could. What's different over the last the last couple of years now? What's different this time around for Mark English? How does, how does it differ from what you were doing? So I think I said last year about how it, it was important for me to have time off from the work in order to recover from my speed sessions. And it still remains that way because when I'm doing like really hard sprint workouts, I need to let the body recover and being off of my feet um, allows me to recover in order to do the, the next hard workout. So, um, yeah, from that point of view, it's been really, really helpful. Yeah. Does it mean as well that you're doing more sessions as a full-time athlete? Well, I suppose if you're looking at the, the speed sessions, it means that I'm kind of getting more out of them. Um, so if you're looking at it that way, um, it's probably more accurate. But, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's definitely helping with my training. Yeah. Do you still feel that you have it in the legs the same way you did 10 years ago, Mark? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, like, I think at the minute I, kn I know a lot more about how to get the most out of my body than I did 10 years ago. And that means a lot when you're coming to, to 800 meter running, and especially at a championship level. Yeah. And obviously you've got a, w a great working relationship with your coach, Phelan, so you have? Yeah, Phelan's really good coach to have. Um, I switched over to Phelan towards the end of 2020. And he's just been able to keep me really accountable during my training sessions and the training group at the Dublin Track Club um, has been really good from like a social outlet after training. It allows me to help recover quicker and um, get ready for the next workout. So it's been really, really helpful. Yeah. What's the workouts like between now and when you take to the track for the first time um, for the heats in the Europeans next weekend, Mark? So the work is primarily done now. It's just about tapering for next week and making sure that I'm not doing anything that could <laughs> injure me or uh, set me back. Um, so I'll just um, keep the legs ticking and make sure that I'm ready to go for next week. Yeah. Did that race in Spain then earlier this week give you an indication of, yeah, you're ready? You, you have the work done here? Yeah, look, I know I'm ready to go, but equally there's maybe 10 or 12 other athletes who are ready to go as well. It'll be a very tough competition and I know when I get out there, it'll be challenging. But uh, I'm ready for it. Yeah. What are you expecting of yourself then next week? Do you do you see do you look at it as that you have to medal here because you, you medaled in 2019, you won a bronze, and obviously you were a silver medalist previously as well at 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 Undor. As a medal, the ultimate target for you is this what you want? Well, of course, like everyone racing in the 800 meters, we'd all love a medal, but you know it it will be tough. It'll be very competitive. I was chatting to Eric Swinski there, the pacemaker on the circuit recently about the standards of competition, and he just said it's very high in over 800 meters at the minute and um, i'd agree with them it is you know um and i just i just hope to be able to give it my best shot when i get out there next week yeah yeah and then of course obviously down the line then we've got paris to come uh this this year as well so it's it's a huge year 2023 is a massive year for you mark 
Yeah, no, 23 is a big year. There's an opportunity to qualify for the Olympics and uh, to get over to Paris then for the Games on 24. And who knows, it's uh, it's not that far to, to even drive. So I might even be able to drive down to Paris with the, the, the Diesel Card Ireland that's been supplied by MCR Group as well, you know. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting times ahead and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. What do you need to do to qualify for the Olympics, Mark? Uh, well, I can either run the the automatic standard, um, which has now increased from where it was at. I think it's at uh, one forty four uh, seven, so I can run that time, or I can qualify through the rankings. Um, but I won't know that until twenty twenty four, when that's all finalised. So, there are the two ways. Yeah. Um. Just reflecting back on the last uh, cycle that the Olympics say you needed was it the rankings that you needed to get through the la- on the last occasion for the Olympic Games. Yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah, I actually ran the standard in the end. So yeah. uh, it ended up that there were no athletes qualified through the ranking system for the 800 meters for the Olympics in 2021. Yeah. It was just whoever had ran the standard. It just yeah. happened. So it happened that the, the Olympics in the 800 meters that year was really, really competitive. So um, who knows? It might be the same again next time and I might need to run the standard. Um, I mean, it's it's just as competitive, if not more, because there's lots of guys that are staying in the sport um, and you have lots of young guys coming up. So uh, it's very competitive. Yeah, and I suppose if you make it as far as the the, the Olympics and and Paris as well next year, Mark, it's a wee bit closer to home. You have a wee bit more support. There'll be, be quite a few looking to go that way. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's amazing. Even racing in Madrid there recently, there was um, a group of Irish under twenty athletes over competing in this DNA athletics competition. It was great to have their support. But yeah, like with Paris being so close, it um, hopefully there'll be a, a an Irish contingent over to support. Yeah, well, listen, there's a lot to go on between now and when, when the Olympics come around in Paris uh, next year. Obviously, we've got with the Europeans next uh, to come next week. Um, There's a sort of good feeling around Irish athletics at the moment off the back of, of recent competitions. It's very much on the up, Mark. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, you've got lots of guys there, like Israel Alatunde in the 60 metres. I think he ran uh, 6.57, was it there? In the... He broke the record, yeah. No, yeah, amazing, amazing race. Um, So he'll be in good stead now coming into the European Championships. Um. And you know you've you've Kier McGee there. You know she's not competing at these European indoors, but she's she'll be hoping to go well now in the outdoors as well. And um, Rashida, she had a very good indoor season too, um, over four hundred meters. So yeah, look, it's 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 very positive. Um, and things are looking good. Yeah. Okay. Just finally, then I'm going to touch on the Donegal Sports Star Award for for 2022. You were named the overall winner. Um, uh, you've won that now several times. Uh, we didn't get to speak to you after after it, Mark, but. Uh, how much does that mean to you to win the, the, the Sports Star Award? Because you do hold uh, home very, very close to your heart. Yeah, look, it means a lot. Very happy to come away with the award. Very pleased. It's an amazing honour, as I said in the in the video. And I'm uh, very thankful that, you know, I've just been recognised for my achievements throughout 2022. Yeah, and the achievements last year, obviously, was the bronze medal in the 800. Another medal in the 800 this time around would be nice, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly it was. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, many thanks for joining us, Mark, and we wish you every success and the best of luck with uh, the indoors in Istanbul and Turkey next week. Thanks, Wendy Nashin.